Good morning, YouTubers, friends, followers, subscribers, Trevorites. But mainly the subscribers, because you're the ones that keep the channel growing in the right direction. But it would not be right if I didn't give a shout out to my lovers and the haters. Waste spacers, chicken chasers, master bakers. YouTube creators. If you're watching this video right now, though, and you've not yet subscribed, why not? It's free. Happy Sunday, everyone. It's Sunday, isn't it? Yes. Um, yeah. Been up this morning. Actually lay awake this morning. Just listen, I had the windows open last night. The top of the bed's cold. Just just nice. Just feeling it. And then I heard the bee. Yep. Zussi. Wasn't calling you over, but hi. Zussi needed to go out and uh, have a piddle this morning. Didn't you, son? So, yeah, dealt with him, fed the dog. <laughs> yes, and I've just had my first coffee, which I haven't even drank yet, actually, as I uh, prepare to tell you what's happening in today's today's news. Right, but I would have to start off by letting you all know that I am so grateful um, for those of you who have read my new book, Exploitation, and for those of you that have left a review on Amazon. 30 people have left a review so far. 29 five-star reviews and one four-star review. Uh, excellent, excellent. So uh, whether they're one, three, four, doesn't matter. If you read it, get the review, let me know what you think. Um, yeah. As I said, I had started writing another book. I'm on chapter six and a half now. Just written the first six chapters of it. I'll let you know the story about it when I feel it's ready to let you know. But... Depending on the reviews, because I, I learn from your, I learn from your critiques what needs to be uh, fixed, and one of the things that do need to be fixed is why can I never seem to get someone who's a good proofreader? Why is it these book companies are absolutely atrocious at proofreading manuscripts? It's shocking, but there you go. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so what else is happening? Uh, ITV bosses are being are being um, are being scrutinised by the. Uh, select committee, whatever it is to do with media studies and culture. And it seems ITV bosses were aware of Schofield as far back as 2018, 2019. They knew about what he was getting up to. But you know what? They didn't carry out an investigation. They thought, you know, it's Philip. It'll brush its, brush its way over. They thought the same as Jimmy Savile, and that turned out to be terrible, didn't it? I'm not comparing the two, apart from their two meals in ITV that were very, very important. One was BBC, sorry. They were very, very important, high profile, untouchable, and did what they did. Right. Now, for those of you that did send me messages about Rwanda, the asylum seekers in Rwanda, Trevor, it's been, it's been cancelled again by the European Court of Human Rights. Well, people, I know that Suella Braverman and Rishi Sunak are trying to opt out of parts of the European Court of Human Rights. We're trying to move away from it. And it's quite weird. At a time, this morning, my son sent me a video and I watched it and it was Kylian Mbappe, who is an awesome, awesome footballer, plays for France. And he was wearing a PSG football top. And on the back of it, it said, visit Rwanda. That's a fact. And I went, hmm, Rwanda, okay. And then I happened to look in the media today and I find out that Rwanda is actually, and believe it or not, I've never been, but it's allegedly meant to be a fantastic holiday destination. And it's a favourite of the likes of Lewis Hamilton and Naomi Campbell and Ray Parler and Premiership footballers. They all go to Rwanda. Apparently it's a fantastic destination. What is the drama? The UK have invested hundreds of millions of pounds in Rwanda. We've actually built resorts with swimming pools and stuff for these asylum seekers to go to. Do you know what? Give it to the veterans. Send the veterans out there. Homeless veterans. They'd love to go to the Rwanda and, and live in a beautiful hotel and stuff. They would. Send them. Yeah. You wouldn't see the UK government investing in hundreds of millions of pounds in a resort in the UK to put homeless veterans in. Nah, nah, nah. You wouldn't, would you? No. Right. What else is happening? I did a video yesterday and I hope you watched it. It was about... The armed forces are about to put the first ever female general in charge as a chief of general staff. Now, the truth is, and I think you'll all agree with me, if she's qualified, 
if she's experienced and battle hardened, then yes, she's the right person for the job. But in a time of conflict, in a time where we don't know what's happening, in a time where we're in the middle of a proxy war with Ukraine and Russia, in a time where files have been found in caves in Afghanistan with threats to attack the UK, in a time when we need strong leadership and someone that's battle hardened, someone knows how to run operations, this is not the time to put a female in there just to tick boxes. Now, Lieutenant General Sharon Neesmith, truthfully, is probably an outstanding general. But I don't believe in civil servants using her, using her to further their own woke gains. Leave the woman alone. Let her go through her career. The fact that Ben Wallace, the Defence Secretary, has said, we want you to apply for that role, tells me already that they've already decided it's a box tick exercise. If they're asking you to apply for a role, it means they're, you're going to get it. Exactly. Now, a lady who has, they say, been to the Balkans, been to Iraq. Yes, as a signal, in charge of signals. There's a difference between being in charge of a training regiment, a signals regiment, than there is leading brigades and battles out and coordinating attacks and seeking out enemy forces. There's a difference in that. She's not the right person for the job. And if she gets it, she will have been put forward in front of, of spe special boat service, special, special air service. You know, you're talking about guys in MI5, MI6, top generals. She's got that role in front of all, all. When you consider that we've spent the last 20 odd years in, in, in combat, in Afghanistan and Iraq and doing things in Syria and special forces operations. Are you telling me that she is the person who's better than all those guys who are battle hardened and know how to run operations? No, she's not. Stop taking it, leave her alone, let her get on with her career and stop putting people in positions that have no experience and no qualifications. Just my 10 pence worth. Anyway, here's good news, not for me, but well, it is good news for me. Twitter, Twitter. Now I find Twitter to be toxic. I'm attacked, or I'm not even on it and I'm still attacked every day. Uh, in fact, a couple of days ago when I met up with Matthew Morrison for a beer, he showed me some of the things that he was being accused of. He was being accused of helping me scam that I'm raising money for a memorial or something. Anyway, I just laughed. I went, you see what I mean? I'm not even on the bloody thing and I'm still being accused of stuff. So anyway, what Elon Musk has done is this. He's went, right, I'm going to limit the amount of usage that people can use on Twitter. He's going to remove people's accounts, which means you're only able to have your own account and a business account. See these here days where you could have about three or four trolling accounts? They're all about to be deleted. And guess what? If you're verified, in other words, you've paid your eight pounds for a blue tick. If you are verified on Twitter, then you're going to be limited to how many tweets and how many texts you can do a day. But if you're not verified, there'll be times when you'll just you'll be locked out because you haven't paid the money, which is good news. I love it. I love it. Elon Musk is ruining Twitter. Uh, well, he's making it safer, but he's also getting rid of all the bullshit, which I think is great news. So there we go. Right. Don't shoot the messenger. This is this is in today's media. I will leave a link in the description. But someone, someone decided to do a survey of which place in the UK do women have the most sexual partners? I'm sure there, there needs to be one done with men, doesn't there? And then one's done with its and theys and thems. So at the minute, it looks like Hull. Females in Hull have the most sexual, have the most sexual partners, apparently. Newcastle comes two on the list, with Stoke-on-Trent coming three, Liverpool coming four, and Glasgow, number five, the top five places in the United Kingdom where women have the most sexual partners. I didn't do the survey. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just saying. Now, here comes a little bit of a damaging news that I've seen this morning, and I find this strange. Do you know the way we have, like, you've all, you've all heard of the thin blue line. It's, 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 it's the police, the thin blue line. Well, what you do have is you will see lots of cops in the past with union flags on here. Little union jack, we'll call it a, a union flag. And it's usually black with white. And in the middle, it'll have the color of maybe green. 
maybe red, maybe blue. Blue is for police, and it's to recognise the falling police officers. So you will see lots of police officers in London with their jackets on, their flat jackets on. They'll, they'll, they maybe have their gun, uh, they'll, they'll have their, their lasers, uh, tasers even, and their cuffs and pepper spray or whatever it is. And you'll see on their patch, they'll have a Velcro patch here with a black union flag with a blue line going across it. Well, it's been banned now. Police officers in the UK are now not allowed to wear that patch with the blue line on it to represent their fallen comrades because allegedly it is offending, it is offending the LGBT community. Yes, yes. I'll put the link in the description. I want you to read it. So now cops can't commemorate their fallen in case they offend people in that community. Well, do you know what? That community, in my, in my own opinion, doesn't even make sense. There's groups in it that don't even make... There's, there's groups in it that shouldn't even be grouped together. They shouldn't. It's, it's just... It's a bunch of letters. They don't like each other. I mean, they don't get on with each other, yet we've grouped them together. We, we need to separate that group. For instance... One part of that group, the gay side of it, like cock. In that group, there's the trans side of it that want their cocks cut off. So let's put them together. They shouldn't be in the same group. They don't even have the same morals, the same mental conditions to each other. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a weird group. It is. It really is. Yes. There you go. I've said it. I've said it. And that, for my YouTube human reviewer, that's an actual fact. Right, what else is happening? What else is happening? I've done that, done that, done that, done that, done that. Yes, well, I, I think I'll go and have a relaxing day. Tonight at 7 p.m., I will be live with my Sunday Night Live with Fiona and Graham. Yes, Fiona and Graham from Gibraltar. It'll be an international live tonight. Hopefully see you all there. Thanks very much for your support on this channel. Thanks to those that do support my channel through PayPal. And I appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone. But most of all, stay safe.